Hello, and welcome to this month's edition of Penfield Happenings. In this episode, we will look into a recent author visit to the elementary schools, learn about how making kites is not just teaching students about art, and hear about a new shopping center that is causing different reactions in the community. Stay tuned for that and much more as we begin the April episode. I'm Julia Givens, and this is Penfield Happenings. Grave Concern is a group dedicated to protecting historic grave sites. Christian Groff talked to a chairperson in the group about one of their projects recently completed in Strasburg, Pennsylvania. I'm here in Strasburg standing on a pile of rubble which was recently removed from the Hermara Cemetery thanks to local organization Grave Concern. For nearly three decades, Grave Concern has been protecting and restoring historical grave sites in Lancaster County. People were interested in the historic cemeteries of Lancaster County that are sort of special because uh, they're in on these farms or along county roads and it's where early settlers were buried and their families are all represented in these cemeteries. Recently, a local farmer neglected to preserve one particular historical gravesite, the Herm Mayer Cemetery. Grave Concern came in here and assessed the situation and contacted the police. And it is against the law to uh, violate a cemetery like this. Um, so the farmer was charged with um, that offense. And as part of it, he was asked to make restitution. This restitution, in cooperation with Grave Concern, took the form of the restoration of damaged stones, construction of new ones, and a large wall surrounding the cemetery. Over, uh, over here, there's some, there's just, it looks like there's some larger rocks resting against the, uh, the wall here. Tell me about those, please. Well, when we were going through the pile of rubble, and when we started this whole restoration process, uh, that whole half of the cemetery had been bulldozed, so there was a, a good mountain of rubble, probably about eight feet tall. And so we sifted through that pile of rubble, and anything that looked like it could be related to the cemetery, we pulled out. Grave Concern is always on the lookout for intrusion on historical sites. Grave Concern has been involved in uh, some developments that have um, involved these cemeteries. There was Sweet Briar uh, up towards Mannheim. There was Kanoi Crossings near Elizabethtown. Uh, right now, uh, the Belmont um, development that's going in next to Red Rose Commons has an old cemetery that Grave Concern is working with the developers to protect it. So uh, these cemeteries are all over Lancaster County and they're important to the county. It's great knowing that there's a group like Grave Concern out there. It really gives me a peace of mind knowing that my great uncle's grave is going to be protected. Thanks to Grave Concern, Lancaster County can rest a little easier when laid to rest. For Hempfield Happenings, I'm Christian Groff. Over the past 12 years, authors have been visiting the Hempfield Elementary Schools, and recently, author Matt Novak from Carlisle, Pennsylvania, did just that. Quentin Hernandez read more into this event. Because that's kind of how a story comes together a lot of times, is just thinking about it, building from simple things, and putting a simple thing here, simple thing here, simple thing here, and putting it... Author visits occur at least once a year at each elementary school. Students of East Petersburg, Lensville Primary, and Roarstown were visited by Matt Novak. Funded by parent-teacher organizations and by applying for educational grants, Matt Novak visited Hemfield Elementary students to give a learning opportunity that he never had. Well, I mean, I grew up, you know, I always wanted to be an artist, you know, ever since I was a little kid, probably kindergarten. 
And I never had any resources where I grew up. Um, we never had author visits or, you know, I didn't know any artists. To me, you know, I think there's probably a lot of kids like that who, you know, may be interested in the arts, um, don't really know, you know, what to do about it. And so if I can give them a little bit of information that, you know, might help them, you know, feel a connection or, you know, be able to then go into a library and look at the books in a different way um, as, as an artistic student. Matt Novak visited back in 2007 and with his appeal to all grade levels was invited to come back this year. Students share their favorite moments from the assembly. Like um, with when he drew like the duck and um, the person and the person licked everything. They draw pictures and make them into movies. When we made the story on the piece of paper. How he was writing and how he was like talking and writing his pictures. When he drew the story about Cherry and Sammy. I want to write stories and create movies like him. As students enjoy the assembly, Mr. Novak is teaching them something more important than having fun. Well, the thing, thing I really try and stress is creativity and just all the different ways that you can be creative. You know, a lot of times people, you know, you've heard of writer's block and things like that. A lot of times people think that creativity is like this something you really have to work at but I try and show the kids that it's 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 natural and it's fun to to be creative you know it's still it's something that everybody can do author visits like Matt Novak's are an essential step in guiding young creative minds on the way to success for Hemfield Happenings I'm Quentin Hernandez at Centerville Elementary the sixth grade students are making kites Jack Harrison took a deeper look at what this project entailed Center Elementary School, that's the place. Who? The sixth graders. They've been working on a kite project to help express their feelings, their creativity, and yet learn more about world cultures. Go get what color you want in the when Centerville Elementary School was given a grant to fund its art department, they hired Cherie Sickings, an artist native of Bermuda, to teach the sixth grade class how to build one of her country's favorite culture pastimes. In Bermuda, there's a tradition of making this kite for actually Good Friday and Easter weekend. And um, so I explained the context of the kite and the origins of it in that, um, as part of that religious weekend. But I also explained that as a creative process and an art form, that the Bermuda kite is able to transcend the boundaries of religious borders and has actually become part of our whole community. To show you, okay? So it's something you can Does everybody understand that? Students involved with the kite project were delighted with being able to express themselves in this new creative manner and are pleased with the new toilsome art project. It's just another way for us to express our creativity. My kite is only three colors. It's yellow, red, and orange, and all of them express happiness. I think it's kind of like different than what we normally do. Like in first and second grade, we always do like, like kind of like scale exercises, I guess. But this is kind of something like challenging, and I think that's kind of like a climax of being in like sixth grade. Student and artist Layla Howards described to me a colorful way that she decided to make her kite. And then you add like different touches, like in the center you can cut out a dis like a specific design and put it in the center, and then you can do a hummers and um, decorate the stick if you want to. We have been successful in piquing their curiosity. And both Mrs. Burns and I believe that in order for lessons to be cemented in their minds, because we are throwing an awful lot at them, um, that curiosity is the key. Although I'm not flying one of their homemade kites, they will be this May. For Hanfield Happenings, I'm Jack Harrison. Registration for Hemfield High School's preschool is open, and student reporter Taylor Hess went to learn more about this program. Hemfield High School offers a two- and three-day preschool program for children ages three to four, offering a one-to-one -one with students and high schoolers. This preschool is very different because it's um, 
high school students working with children. So we train high school students to work with the children one-on-one. -on -one. Um, there's always a head teacher in the classroom, but then the high school students learn how to engage with children, how to interact, and also they do a little teaching as well in the, in the program. Inside, um, I like to, um, um, I, can, I can flip. In this program, each child is paired with a high schooler, allowing them to focus on the preschooler's weak points. So we can have one high school student um, and with one child. So if a child is struggling with cutting or struggling with writing their name, we can have one high school student you know, paired up with that one child and there's always someone there to help them, especially individualize their needs. <laughs> I think there's a lot of warm fuzzy feelings they get from the kids and um, it's neat to see even a student who may um, maybe academically doesn't do well but yet in here they excel um, working with children. So it's really neat to see that um, relationship and that, that bond happen. Registration for this program is still ongoing, however spots are limited and on a first come first serve basis. Sign up while you still can. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Taylor Hess. <laughs> With spring just beginning, I talked to some students and teachers to hear why they're excited for the season upon us. What do you like best about spring? I like mowing. The longer days. It's going to be nicer weather outside. It's lighter outside at night, so I don't have to drive in the dark as much. What's your favorite part about spring? Uh, the flowers. To go outside and get fresh air and finally just feel like I'm not stuck in my house all the time. Super excited for that. I like how it's a lot of nice weather and it's a lot more daylight to be outside. My favorite spot part about spring is watching my kids go play outside, get so tired they actually go to sleep at night. Well, school's almost done so I'm looking forward to that so that's, the only, that's what I like about it. My favorite part about spring is spring sports. I like spring because it means it's closer to graduation. <laughs> With teachers being out from their classes, Substitute teachers are in high demand to cover them, but recently, Hemfield School District has been having trouble with this. Dana Greener learned more about the situation. Substitute teachers are a vital part of the school day, but not many people know exactly how they're found. Well, there's a program called ASOP, and it's through the computer, and subs um, get messages to say that there's a position available at this a teacher has signed out for being absent and they decide whether they're going to take it or not. I found out on uh, ASOP, um, or what's called Frontline now, which is a service that uh, contacts you. It's also not well known that schools are struggling to find enough substitute teachers. Um, we have seen across the state of Pennsylvania uh, a decline uh, in um, students leaving high school interested in pursuing the education field. Uh, so across the state, um, low numbers of students are graduating, and which we do believe is contributing to the substitute shortage. Um, this started several years ago when um, the districts were short of cash and um, the teachers that were retiring weren't replaced, so that made a less of job opportunities. The uh, college students were graduating, not finding jobs. I think some decided not to get into teaching because there weren't jobs available. Some people believe that this shortage was caused by low wages. However, that has been proven false. I believe it has something to do with um, the uh, pay that's offered uh, substitute teachers, quite frankly. Uh, we did do a survey um, uh, two years ago. Uh, we gave them five questions of, of to rank and rate why. Uh, the main thing was to see if we were compensating them well. And surprisingly enough, number one was safety and security. Number three was money. Uh, so the money really wasn't the issue. It was more the environment. Administrators find that the best solution is encouraging college students to pursue careers in education. You know, we hope to see an increase in the number of individuals wanting to pursue education uh, fields of study, uh, which in turn will help create uh, the pool of candidates. Uh, not only for teaching positions, but also for substitute positions. Whenever we go to a job fair or a recruiting event, uh, of course we have so many openings uh, for, for teacher vacancies, um, but not everybody that we talk to at the job fair is going to get that position. So we encourage the ones that don't get the positions to get on the sub list, to get the experience that they need um, to, uh, to 
substitute and also to eventually land them a, a, a full-time position, whether that's with us or another school district. A career in education is not only in high demand, but also beneficial for the community. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Dana Greener. JK Mechanical and Hemfield High School have partnered together to host a food drive which benefits community members. Bailey Titter learned more about this collaboration. JK Mechanical, not only serving your heating and cooling needs, but also serving the members of our community. For the past few years, JK Mechanical has been partnered up with Hemfield High School for the annual food drive. One of the things that we do every year is the Hemfield food drive. Because we're a partner with Hemfield, and not only do we provide support by being there to help collect, gather, and, dis and deliver the things to the food pantry, but our team also collects items as well. The inspiration behind helping the school in this way is simple. A group of workers put together that JK calls their stewardship committee. We have a team of folk here who are responsible for all the giving that JK does to employees and to the community, whether it be a collection of items or the giving of funds. We're the group that helps make that happen here at JK. This team is driven by JK's mission statement, which is to provide service with integrity and earn trust. The Hemfield Student Council also has a part in this food drive. President Alex Groff shares his view on the participants involved. We have dedicated volunteers that, you know, go around, collect the food. You know, it's just great to, you know, help out the community of Hemfield, you know. Um, it's really a great way to, like, come together as one and to uh, support the people in need. With the combined efforts of J.K. Mechanical and Hemfield School District, 6,191 pounds of food are going to the Hemfield Area Food Bank. This food will go to feed more than 160 families in the Hemfield area. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Bailey Titter. Year after year, Hemfield has success in the Scholastic Writing Awards, a national writing competition. Devin Noonmaker got more details about this. Students in the Hemfield School District have been entering their own writing pieces into the Scholastic Writing Awards contest. I spoke with Dr. Ritchie to learn more about the competition. All of our middle school and high school students who entered creative writings had their pieces sent to the regional competition. I was a little concerned because I thought at the regional level maybe we'd have fewer winners this year. They come up against a broad range of students from, a, from the northeastern part of the United States. Surprisingly, we had quite a few winners and I'm really excited about our turnout. Lots of silver keys, gold keys, and honorable mentions. Students from both Landisville and Centerville Middle Schools entered pieces into the contest, as did students from the high school. Of the 118 entries submitted, 62 writings received recognition, 10 of which were from the high school. The remaining 52 were from the middle schools. Yes, we have teachers at each middle school who encourage students to, to enter pieces, creative pieces. It's not a required part of the course, but students can uh, submit through their teachers, and we've had many winners at both Centerville and Landisville Middle School, I'm excited to say. One student from the high school, Allie Keene, submitted her own piece into the contest. She received a silver key for her writing portfolio called Cosmic Collections. So basically students um, in middle school and high school can write about pretty much anything, and there's different categories, so like poetry or short story or flash fiction, and then you enter them into a contest through Scholastic. With objects as simple as pen and paper, students at Hemfield continue to express their creative minds. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Devin Unamaker. The boys' basketball team is coming off of a successful and eventful season, especially after making it to the state quarterfinals for the first time since 2010. I sat down with team member Brian Carl to hear his take on the season. Hemfield's boys' basketball team completed their regular season with a notable record of 15-5, which qualified them for the postseason, where they made an impressive run as well. Here with me, I have senior captain Brian Carl. Thanks for coming today, Brian, and congratulations on the season. Uh, thank you for having me, Julia. Um, so leading up to this season, what were some of your personal goals that you were trying to accomplish throughout? What? Uh, personally, I had an injury during our first scrimmage of the year, which kept me out, and the doctor actually said, you're probably not going to play this year. So personally, I just wanted to uh, get back to what I was doing before, rehabilitate in the uh, athletic trainers, 
as well as a physical therapy clinic to try and get back on the court. Mm -hmm. um, were you pleased with how you ended up being able to come back? I mean, yeah, I achieved my goal, so I got to play a little bit, play the second half of the season as well as postseason. So, um, what kind of things did you do while you were out to kind of prepare yourself to come back as well as you could? Well, I tried to make sure to be at every practice, be at every game. So, as a captain, help lead my team to win more games without me, instead of just letting them do their own thing. Um, how did you feel about the team's success this year? Were you pleased with how everything went? I honestly don't think we expected to do as well as we did. Uh, being one of the last eight teams in the States was a shock to us, and I don't think any of us were disappointed in the season. Mm -hmm. um, I know people were really excited, like the fans and stuff were really excited just throughout all your wins. Um, how did that kind of affect the way you guys played? and just like reacted to your yeah, success we had, as well. We had a great community outreach, uh, very supportive from the school, from the community as a whole, and it, I think it helped us fuel our fire a little bit and helped us win some more games. So looking back on just your past season this year in your senior year or um, just overall in your entire uh, high school basketball career, what are your, some of your favorite moments that you've had? Uh, I think just being around so many different players I was able to be varsity for four years, so I got to know a lot of the older kids who helped give me advice growing up. So I think that was a highlight for me. So what do you think the team is going to look like next year? Do you think they'll be as successful as you are this year? I think they have a chance to be if they want to be. Uh, we have a lot of skill, a lot of talent on the team, and I wish them the best of luck. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for yeah. coming and talking to me today, and congratulations to you and your team for all of your success and just everything over your high school basketball career. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah. The shops at Belmont have been causing quite the buzz among students and community members alike. Joel Pletcher went to take a look at what's going on with the build and how people are reacting. A new shopping center build is gaining attention from teens, residents, and community members of the Lancaster area. Currently under construction along Fruitville Pike in Mannheim Township, the shops at Belmont were originally nothing but farmland. In 2007, BNF Properties, along with Bob Waters Associates, sought to make that change for the Lancaster area. The county has actually identified that farm as, uh, as being within the growth boundary. So BNF identified the property and uh, acts as the, the main partner for the, uh, for the shopping center. And so we started talking to the uh, family to purchase the property for real estate development. Two years later, just when the agreement was signed, the project was suddenly slowed. So it's been a long trek, but eight years ago, we signed the agreement in 2009, just as the recession came on us. And I've been working on that uh, property to get it through uh, all the approvals. But now that the market has recovered, the project is entering the building phase. We broke ground in September of last year. 2016. From that point, it'll be 18 months, and we're six months into that, so we're looking at one year away from right now to having uh, an opening. The trendy shopping center is gaining appeal from the community, and the 30 retail stores and restaurants going in have teens' heads turning. I'm excited because there are stores that aren't really around here, and some are moving closer to. They were really needed on this end of town. Like, we definitely need a Chick-fil-A and a Whole Food shop. I think an Ulta will be a really nice addition also. I'm excited for the Chick-fil-A that they're building there. Um, I usually have to drive really far for the Chick-fil-A. Despite the popularity of the build, there are concerns regarding the influx of traffic along Fruitville Pike. It's going to be a disaster. Fruitville Pike is already the most heavily traveled artery in and out of Lancaster City, and uh, it's going to add almost half as many cars per day, and it's already a disaster. So I don't think they can make the appropriate arrangements in terms of traffic, even though the developer said they would. Um, I just I think it's, it's something that's going to decrease the quality of life in that area. I know it's going to cause some more traffic, but I don't foresee a serious problem with the traffic just because I think that's a really large intersection. So I don't really see it as being something to be concerned about. We're going to be spending $2 million in improvements on Fruitville Pike. That's going to widen that road and um, create two intersections. We're expanding um, the uh, lanes to eight, eight lanes. We're also giving $5 million to Mannheim Township to do traffic improvements wherever they want to. 
Stripping 74 acres of the county's history, preservation of farmland is also an issue. I think it's a waste of perfectly good farmland. I mean, there's space across the street that's empty and space in the mall. I think there's other places the stores could go. I don't so much have a problem with them developing that farmland because of the, the location that it's in, but um, I do think we need to say enough's enough at some point. However, developers are confident that they have reached a resolution with a trading development right. To develop these 60 acres, the township has required us to purchase a TDR, a trading development right. So we've worked with eight or ten farmers. We've purchased these TDRs from them, have given them money to preserve their farm. With problems addressed and popularity among the up-and-coming generation, the shops at Belmont expects to bring in $10 million annually for the benefit of the county. The center plans to open late spring of next year. For Hempfield Happenings, I'm Joel Pletcher. We hope you enjoyed this month's edition of Hempfield Happenings. Be sure to watch next month as the stories will be coming from Anaheim, California. Thanks for watching.